everyone today we are going to talk about world economic forum or wef world economic forum as its name indicates is a economic forum of the globe compassing the economic development economic grievances economic trajectory economic hurdles problems whatever Pertaining to economy is always concentrated by the World Economic Forum. Our tidbits, it came into existence in 1971 by Dr. Klaus Schwab. MD is also Dr. Klaus, Klaus Schwab. Members of 65 nations and 365 companies are the members. Most important and the most proud moment for us is that Mukesh Ambani is given the chair as one of the trustees. Very memorable position India has given in that particular, particular area. Head office is in Geneva, Switzerland, and its objectives are five objectives. Right after the 1967 war between Israel and the Arabs, economy actually went into ten spin. Economy was in shambles, tatters, devastated. Because Arab countries were not willing to sell oil to the West for Western support to Israel and five Arab nations on one side, Israel alone on the other side, still Israel was victor. Israel defeated all five nations, vanquished them. They did not like it. So they decided not to supply, sell, provide the oil to those nations which supported Israel. Economy was in shambles. So in 1971, Klaus Schwab decided, Klaus Schwab decided that we should actually form a global culture, global group, a global agency or organization so that whenever they are against any kind of economic threat from any nation, they should galvanize their own resources and help, help each other and try to tackle the grievances, whatever they are pertaining to economy. And in 1971, it was established on that particular virtue that economic grievances can be tackled on the global scale, whatever kind of problem the economy faces. But Economic Forum tries to tackle them. We are going to go into the objective to find out. In the world, the objective to find out what the objectives they have. Firstly, economic equilibrium among all the members. Economic equilibrium. Instability in 1975 actually prompted these nations to come up with some kind of global organization, and they did. Today, one of the motives is to create economic equilibrium among all the nations, 65 nations plus 365 MNCs. If they are facing any kind of adversity, economic adversity, economic grievances, economic downfall or economic, any kind of economic problems or economic predicaments, then this world Economic Forum is going to rush to their rescue, try to resolve all kinds of problems, whatever they are. They are intrinsic problem or extrinsic problem. They have a problem of management, machines, manpower, whatever kind of financial issues. These nations have been facing. They are going to resolve in the virtue of economy, to save economy, to fortify economy, to strengthen economy. Second objective is 
grievances, resolution, body among the members. This body of World Economic Forum, all 65 countries together, they are there to resolve any kind of grievances, economic grievances that any of this country faces. Capital, material, manpower, machine, whatever. Whatever kind of grievances or whatever kind of problem they, are, they, they face. This forum is going to resolve that particular crisis among any of the nations. So if there's any kind of problem among any 65 nations or 300 plus companies, they should actually address to World Economic Forum and Dr. Klaus Schwab. Klaus Schwab is going to try to resolve this thing once for all and resolve it so amicably that the problem will never ever again prop up. So this is the problem inhibiting, problem tackling, grievances, resolving body, but crux or the core of the motive is economic development among all the nations and in the world. It's a World Economic Forum. Next, the management is art, science and the commerce. Management is art, science and the commerce. Dr. Schwab has always emphasized to all these 360 companies and 65 nations and all other entities that if you want to fortify your economy, if you want to jack up your economy to the jam, if you want to provide a booster to your economy to boost it astronomically, then you remember three words. The management today is not commerce. Management is not that you have a degree in management from IIM or Harvard or Oxford or Wharton or Dell or anywhere. But he says management is three things. It is an art. You have to be manager should be artful, very artful. How to tackle the problem, how to manage, manage the company, how to manage people, how to get the people motivated to do the better thing, to do the faster thing, to do the qualitative thing and to do the quantitative thing. This art. It's a science. Management is scientific. It's not haphazard. It's not a sham. It's a science. If you are not scientifically privy about this, if you are not scientifically tuned, if you don't know how to manage the people or machine or market or material, monetary thing or fiscal thing, investors, government, taxation, if you don't know anything scientifically to handle, then you are not good, effective or efficacious manager because art and science both you must know third thing the manager must know is obvious that is commerce management is fundamentally the turf of commerce the field of commerce but Klaus Schwab has reiterated emphatically so many times that if you are a manager you think that you are going to manage your company with commercial point of view, with the virtue of only commercial knowledge. No, it is not going to help you. <clears throat> you have to learn artful way to manage, scientific way to manage, and a commercial way to manage. In short, he's talking about all five kinds of knowledge that we always talk at GA. Five kinds. You must have declarative knowledge, you must have procedural knowledge, you must have heuristic knowledge, you must have meta knowledge, and you must have empirical knowledge. If you have five kinds of knowledge, you are perfect for anything. Perfect to tackle any kind of problem, perfect to perform anything that matters the most to the company, to the people, to the nation, to the society. So this is the fourth. Now we are moving into fourth. Think tank to car. Strategy for futuristic economy. They are not just sitting over there and uh, dining and uh, whining, enjoying the weather and enjoying the, the, the 
spinning around the city and enjoying all kinds of goodies. No, they are not sitting over there for that purpose. But their aim, their purpose, their goal is not to think about past or present alone. But emphasize more energy, more ideas, more thought, more knowledge, more high kinds of knowledge. Declarative, procedural, heuristic, meta and empirical of the futuristic economy means which way the futuristic economy has been moving, which way the futuristic economy will move, where the tomorrow's economy will be, what tomorrow's economy would need, what would be the demand and the supply, the material, the technology, the innovation of tomorrow. So they are sitting over there and this is a think tank. They are thinking about starting a new strategies about the futuristic economy. So, future. They are sitting over there to carve the future. They are sitting over there to worry about the future. They are very much concerned about the future. They are very much concerned about the economic trajectory in future. They are very much concerned about the economic direction in the future. They are sitting over there not to talk about what happened in the past, in the days of yore. They are not sitting over there discussing about what has been going on today in the present. But mostly their time, their energy, their effort, their strategy, their five kinds of knowledge, their erudition, every single thing is directed, every single thing is pinned upon strategy for the future. So, it must be all futuristic. Futuristic planning is carved over there by this think tank. Fifth is mobilizing the cumulative source of member nations. Mobilizing the cumulative sources. Whatever the sources available. Because in the economic sense, in all 360 five companies and the 65 plus nations they are going to cumulatively mobilize so that they can create a new strategy new environment new type of scenario economic scenario in which this nation can this nation can profit this nation can derive the benefit out of them this nation can flourish economically and those nations which are really underprivileged economically. They are not well-weathered nations economically, but they are undervalued. These kind of nations, which need lots of tremendous amount of support, tremendous amount of banking, tremendous amount of banking, bank rolling, tremendous amount of banking. These kind of nations can have WEF, World Economic Forum, to knock their door, seek for the help, and they are waiting for you to provide you any kind of help you want. There is no red tap, no red tap. There is no babu down, there is no babuism, there is no foreign answers. You go there and within the shortest possible time your problem will be resolved. So this World Economic Forum has been working too. Mo modify, rectify, fortify global economy in every respect, whether it is material, money, mankind, market, management, or any other aim of Alfred Marshall. They follow those laws, draw those rules, those strategies of Warren Buffett, C.K. Prahlad, and all other, all other economists in the world and they go by them and they create a new environment, new scenario, new economy, new opportunities, new developments and new for economy, new environment for economy, economic friendly government, economic friendly policies, economic friendly environment and that is how they have been targeting that. Tomorrow's economy must be much better than the economy of today. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Tomorrow we are going to talk about something else. God bless you.